What is cabin fever? Here's a summary from Wikipedia. Cabin fever refers to the distressing claustrophobic irritability or restlessness experienced when a person or group is stuck at an isolated location. That sounds about right. Let's go to Alaska. Here we are in Kodiak, Alaska. Thankfully not hunting for Kodiak bears, but rather we're on a pilgrimage. We're on a pilgrimage to learn more about the mission to Kodiak Island and the native Alaskan peoples way back in the 18th century when Alaska was not part of the United States, but part of the Russian Empire. Let's take a look. Back in the late 18th century, the fur trade was taking off. The Russian Empire, like other empires, was sending traders across the ocean in search of pelts and profits. The first Russians to Alaska were not missionaries, but fur traders until a mission was sent. Back in 1774, 10 monks left the Valam Monastery, traveled for eight months to go to spread the gospel in an area where Russian fur traders were operating, Kodiak, Alaska. One of the 10 monks was St. Herman of Alaska. When they arrived the monks found the fur traders taking advantage and mistreating the native population. And they spoke out against that mistreatment. There was even open conflict. Despite the evil actions of the fur traders, their mission was successful. In just nine months, the mission leader wrote back to the Valam Monastery that more than 7,000 baptisms and 2,000 weddings had already taken place among the indigenous people in just the first nine months of the mission. The original missionaries and missionaries after them had respect for native cultures and even allowed the use of aspects of their culture to express the gospel message. For example, they allowed spirit houses to be placed over graves. Spirit houses are little houses like doll houses to keep the spirit of the deceased comfortable. It was in this vein that St. Herman operated with cultural sensitivity and missionary zeal. St. Herman was known for his kindness and love for the native people, especially for children. He was also known for his closeness to nature. After the tragic death of the mission leader and other missionaries at sea, St. Herman took over the leadership of the Alaskan mission, now with only three other members. Their work was further hindered by the fur trader Alexander Baranov, who mistreated the Aleut people. Under persecution from Baranov, church buildings were closed and he forbade missionaries to hold services. St. Herman moved to close by Spruce Island, an uninhabited island. But in his semi-seclusion, St. Herman still directed a school for orphans, and many came to visit him as word of his holiness spread. His impact on the indigenous people, as well as on some Russian fur traders, helped ground the long-lasting Russian Orthodox influence in Alaska. St. Herman retired from active missionary work in 1823 and fell asleep in the Lord in 1837. So here we are at St. Herman's Seminary here in Kodiak, Alaska. St. Herman's Seminary, of course, is named after uh, St. Herman himself, one of the members of the original mission team to the Alaskan peoples. I was here back in 2002. Uh, we had a service project here led by a chef and newly priest uh, where we helped fix up some of the buildings here on campus. St. Herman's missionary zeal and respect and love for the native peoples of Alaska and their cultures persists today here at the seminary.
Many of the students themselves come from the native peoples of Alaska. And here on Kodiak Island at St. Herman Seminary, the missionary zeal and cultural sensitivity of St. Herman is reflected in the coursework. So here we are at Monk's Rock Coffee Shop, my favorite coffee shop here in the town of Kodiak. And let's go inside and I'll show you why. Cappuccino, please. So this coffee shop is my favorite coffee shop here in Kodiak, not because of the coffee, but rather because of what they're doing here. You see, with the spirit of missionary work, it's still in the air today, and the church has a coffee shop that's separate from the church that has books, and there's books about um, orthodoxy and Christianity, and it's really an outreach attempt to bring more people into the Orthodox Church. Okay, here we are at Holy Resurrection OCA Cathedral in Kodiak, Alaska. This uh, parish was founded in 1794 by the original um, missionaries, and the current building is from 1945. Unfortunately, the original structure was burned down. So a couple of things I love about this parish. Uh, let's uh, take a look inside and see. Okay, here we are in Holy Resurrection OCA Cathedral of Kodiak, Alaska. The um, church was founded in 1794. The current structure that we're in is from 1945. Unfortunately, there had been a fire. And you can see that the congregation is kind of mixed as far as um, American converts, um, Native American people, especially Aleut, um, and also probably people of Russian origin. And one thing that's really special, I want to take a look at the front of the church uh, by the Iconostasis. Let's go take a look. Now, here at the front of the church, we have the reliquary. And you see on the top, there's this beautiful icon that says, From this day, from this hour, from this very minute, let us love God above all. And then over here, we have the iron cross that he would wear. And think of how heavy that was and uncomfortable, and how that was like an ascetic thing just to wear that iron cross. And then here we have the hat, you know, it's like his, his uh, monastic hat that he would wear. So the relics were moved from uh, Spruce Island to this, this spot. Okay, now we're going to go on a little boat ride across, um, across the bay, and we're going to go to Spruce Island, where St. Herman spent uh, the last uh, years of his life. So as we walk uh, through the forest uh, here on Spruce Island, Spruce Island is a Pacific rainforest uh, of the cold kind, not, not a hot uh, rainforest. You see all the moss on the ground. And that moss really is like a soundproofing of the whole forest where it's very quiet, very quiet forest. And so when you walk, you can see how that really appealed uh, to to St. Herman as a monk. And he had a lot of solitude and quiet here. Okay, now we've made it to the church uh, where uh, is built over the grave of St. Herman. It's uh, and just a little church there and a great, uh, is a common, um, common uh, pilgrimage site and they have liturgy, you know, on a day of his repose every year here in this in this chapel that's really, you know, in the forest. Let's go take a look. Okay, so here we are uh, in the, the nave of the church, just a little tiny little chapel. Uh, you feel kind of the, the sense of holiness in this quiet uh, and special place for us here um, as Orthodox that are Americans. And here I'll show you the holy altar area. 
where uh, built over really the grave of of Saint Herman. And now we'll go outside and we'll look at the spot of his grave and the altar really built over it. Uh, the church is kind of like on stilts above above his grave. So we can see here, um, I haven't been here since 2002, we have the grave of St. Herman. Again, his relics were moved to the, um, to the cathedral uh, across, across the water there uh, in, in Kodiak. And people come here and uh, pray um, and ask for him to pray for us. And, uh, and it's a place of pilgrimage. Here is the, is the site of the grave, which is just um, uh, right under the altar there of the church. Okay, so that's it. Um, again, thank you for uh, joining me for this pilgrimage to Kodiak Island and Spruce Island. There's more to see, of course, in, in Alaska than just these sites. You, know, you can go to Sitka. Uh, we could follow the footsteps of St. Innocent. But uh, today we, we took the time to learn a little bit more about St. Herman. So uh, Christ is risen and God bless you. And may we look at St. Herman and his missionary efforts as the example of us also to share the light of Christ with others around us. Christ is risen. God bless you.